Hello everyone, in this INR number 54, we are going to discuss a very important PYQ called as oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, right? So what is oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve? It is a relationship. It is a relationship between what? It is a relationship between percentage saturation of hemoglobin. Remember, percentage saturation of hemoglobin versus partial pressure of oxygen right so these are the two things which we are going to compare so what we will do that percentage saturation of hemoglobin will be plotted on y axis and partial pressure of oxygen will be plotted on x axis that is the what we are going to see in this so when you take the curve here you will observe that curve is going like a s or a sigmoid shape so you will see sigmoidal shape of the curve why it is sigmoidal shape because of positive cooperativity so what do you mean by positive cooperativity as we all know that hemoglobin is tetrameric so our hemoglobin is tetrameric means they are having four places to combine with oxygen so when they will combine with first molecule of oxygen this will increase the ability of hemoglobin or you can say this will increase the affinity of hemoglobin to combine second oxygen molecule with faster rate and second molecule will be accelerating the third molecule and this is how they will be having higher affinity for the subsequent oxygen combining or binding so this is called as positive cooperativity right so tetrameric hemoglobin molecule can bind four oxygen molecule and has higher affinity for each subsequent oxygen molecule not only this they can release uh, one oxygen molecule and when they will release one molecule that will promote the release of other molecule also at the faster rate. So that is why it is a sigmoidal shape. So normal oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is sigmoidal shape. In this you can see on the left side there is a venous blood which is a deoxygenated blood which means blood is returning from the tissue and on the right side you are seeing the as you are moving on to the right side you are seeing arterial blood oxygenated blood where you are seeing oxygenated blood leaving the lungs right and here what is important landmark landmark is p50 what is p50 p is partial pressure of oxygen remember what is p p is a partial pressure of oxygen and what is 50 50 is where partial pressure of oxygen where hemoglobin will be 50 percent saturated with oxygen so now you can see this is the 50 percent saturation and what is the partial pressure partial pressure will be approximately at this place right so partial pressure of oxygen where hemoglobin is 50 percent saturated is called as p50 right so this p50 in arterial blood is 26 mmhg and in venous blood it is 29 mmhg right so what is the basic purpose of this odc or oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve it will it will reflect the local tissue oxygen need so that is what we are going to see on the curve that where it is moving it is moving shift to the right or shift to the left right what you will observe in this you will observe p50 will be increased when there is a shift to the right shift to the right you can see this is the shift to the right and that is what you can see p50 will be getting increased right so that is what we are going to see now here it will be shift to the right so p50 will be increased here right same thing if you are seeing shift to the left p50 will be decreased so if you are sh having shift shift to the left so this is the shift to the left here right so that time p50 will be also reduced so shift to the right what is the meaning of shift to the right shift to the right means you can see when they are moving right that means it is easier for tissue to extract oxygen from the hemoglobin means hemoglobin they can easily rela release the oxygen molecule right that is the meaning so when you are seeing shift to the right means hemoglobin can easily remove so when you are moving shift to the right that means hemoglobin will be easily removing their oxygen molecule for the tissue right but here shift to the left means it is difficult for tissue to extract oxygen right because why tissue cannot take oxygen because this oxygen is strongly combining with hemoglobin molecule that is shift to the left right so now you understood what is the purpose of this shift to the left and right so when you find when you will see the shift to the right when you find increased value of carbon dioxide 
right where there is an increased value of carbon dioxide there will be shift to the right and that is called as bohr's effect so this mnemonic also you can remember bohr last word is r so bohr's effect is right side shift right shift in response to the co2 concentration right so if co2 is more there will be shift to the right if co2 partial pressure of co2 is more shift to the right will be seen same thing if co2 is more what will happen h2co3 will be formed then they will break down into h plus and hco3 minus means hydrogen ion is getting increased hydrogen ion increase means there is a decrease in ph and that means acidosis so during acidosis or during increased H plus ion, you will see the shift to the right. Increase in temperature, increase in level of 2, 3 biphosphoglycerate, all these things when they are increased, there will be shift to the right. So temperature, PCO2, 2, 3 dpg, H plus increase, all these things will be shifting the curve to the right. Apart from this, remember, anemia and high altitude, anemia, high altitude and exercise, all these things so just remember like that exercise will increase your temperature right exercise will increase your hydrogen ion also acidotic behavior will be there in the blood so that is why anemia high altitude exercise they will also shift curve to the right what are the factors which will be shifting curve to the left left means oxygen uh, sorry carbon di uh, oxygen is strongly combining with hemoglobin so what will be that condition when there is a decrease in the level of carbon dioxide Remember, when there is an increase in level of the carbon dioxide shift to the right is called as Bohr's effect. You got the point? When there is a decrease in carbon dioxide shift to the left will be seen and that is called as Haldane effect. Remember, Bohr is right, Haldane L, take the L as a mnemonic, L, Haldane will be on the left side in response to decrease in carbon dioxide, right? So L for lower L for lower CO2, L for left shift, right? So that is what we can remember. Haldane, lower CO2 or PCO2 value and left shift will be there. So if CO2 is less, what will happen? Hydrogen ion will be also less. So that means there will be alkalosis, that will be alkalosis and there will be a decrease in pH, right? So now we can see that if uh, this decrease in pH, please just mind it, the pH will not decrease, pH will be having increase. So just have some small correction. There will be increase in the pH, right? So there will be increase in the pH, which will be causing alkalosis, right? So that is what you need to remember that. Please remember, I'm marking this. Increase in pH will be shifting the curve to the, light, uh, to the left side, right? So apart from that, temperature decreases, 2-3 dpg level decreases, so decrease in temperature, decrease in PCO2, decrease in 2-3 dpg and decrease in H+. Remember, decrease in hydrogen ion will increase the pH and that will make it alkaline. So alkalosis will be keeping the curve towards the left side. Apart from this, we all know that fetal hemoglobin, methemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin, they have a high affinity for oxygen and they will not release them easily and that is why shift to the left will be seen. So these are the parameters which we see often in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve and this is what you need to remember for your exam. So revise this topic as this was the recently asked question in all exam and my best wishes to all of you.